In this video, I want to introduce and go through an example, really, of how you can produce observability plots for an astronomical object. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you don't just want to get your telescope or even book time on a professional telescope without really knowing if your object is at the best location in the sky, the time of the year to even view it. So what you really want is you want your object nice and high in the sky, preferably at its peak altitude in the sky during the darkest part of the night as well. One, you're looking through less of the atmosphere and two, it's the darkest. So if you're looking at deep sky objects, you're going to get less background brightness from the sky. So the whole point of planning your observations really is to make sure that it's the best time of the year to do it and also that it's high in the sky. So part of these observability tools can help you plan that. And you can use this for, if, you know, if you're doing it in your own back garden, or even if you're a professional astronomer looking to use professional telescopes. And this tool I'm going to go through really is part of, or it's on the website for the Isaac Newton telescopes. And they are a collection of telescopes that are on the island of La Palma. So these are on top of the island and these are used to plan observations. Really. And there's a few different modes that you can use to plan the observation. So what I'm going to do is give you an example here and show you how you can find out when the best time to look for a particular object is. So I'm going to use the example of La Palma, but actually you can choose any other professional observatory on the list here. If it's not there or you want to do it at your home address or somewhere else that's not on the list, then you can actually use the longitude and latitude of your location instead. But I'm just going to use one of the default ones just to show you this example. You can change the mode. So star alt is the main one really. And what this does is it will give you the altitude in the sky, so how high it is above the horizon, over the course of one night. And you put your date in there and it will give you how high it is in the sky as a function of the time. You can do other ones like star track, which will track the path of your object across the sky so you can see where it is in the sky over the night again for a single night you choose the time and date or the date and then you can actually look at the the peak altitude over the course of a year so that will tell you when it's the highest in the sky throughout the year so you might want to actually change the time in the year that you look at an object and that will give you the best time and then actually it will also give you the best observing date of that object from that location which is the last one which is star malt and what I'll do is I'll go through each one of those and show you how you can use those to then best plan your observation so first I'm just going to use the current date as a default and I'm going to use the star alt mode first and what I need to do, so again, I'm using the La Palma observatories as the default one here. And I'm going to use the Orion Nebula. That's quite a nice object to have a look at. And if you can do some imaging or want to have a look at that, it's a good nebula to have a look at. So I'm going to use that as an example. So what we need to do here is we can put it in a few different formats. The format I'm going to use is in hours, minutes, seconds for the RA. And then you'll do a space and then you'll do the deck coordinate as well. So you need the RA deck coordinate of your object. So what I'm going to do here, so the RA coordinate for the Orion Nebula is it's five hours, 35 minutes and 17 seconds. So that is our RA coordinate for it. Then do a space. I then want to do the deck. So this is minus five degrees space. 23 arc minutes and then 28 arc seconds so it should look something like that hopefully and also if you want to give it a name because actually you can put multiple objects on here is you can put it in some square brackets and I'm going to call it Orion so that is our object hopefully set up and you've got some other options down here uh, because this is part of a professional observing tool for planning observations using the Isaac Newton group telescopes so the William Herschel and the Isaac Newton telescope, you've got these limits on it as well, which will come on your plot. So it tells you that if your object's below that altitude in the sky, then you're not going to be able to see it. Basically, it's below the limits of the telescope. And it doesn't matter if that is these telescopes, you shouldn't really be looking at objects that are really close to the horizon or low down on the horizon anyway, because you're just not going to get a good view. You want to look at it high in the sky, there's less atmosphere, going to get less atmospheric distortion that way as well so the air mass is less so once you've done that you can then click retrieve and it should generate a plot for that particular night that you chose for that object and that location 
So here we go. So you'll get a plot that looks a bit like this. So at the top there, you've got your location you've chose and your longitude, latitude as well, the altitude. And here is our object. So I called it Orion. And again, you can call it whatever you like. And then it has its coordinates there. It hasn't put the second on there because it really need it to be listed there. It also has the moon as well. So depending on where the moon is in the sky and its illumination, that is very important for planning observations. Because if you're going to look at the Orion Nebula, for example, if the moon was 100% illumination and it was high in the sky, you're not going to be able to see much because you're going to get an enormous amount of glare from that moon, which ruins any faint object. So the moon is a very important thing to consider here. So you've got that. It's 28% illuminated and it's also the dashed line, which means it's this one here. That is the altitude of the moon in the sky against the date, so not the date, the, the time. So the time is on the x-axis here and it's in universal time. So depending on where you are, that'll either be local time or not. And then on your y-axis, this is your altitude. So this is the angle above the horizon, whereas 90 degrees is directly above you, at zenith. Zero degrees is the horizon. And you can see those limits for the telescopes are listed on here as well and again they'll serve as good limits really for your own observation because you don't really want to be looking at anything low down on the horizon because you're just not going to get a good enough view of that so for this particular evening that i've chose for this object and that location the orion nebula is probably observable in the early part of the evening and then it sets as you go through the evening now these dashed lines here is for astronomical twilight what that means is between those lines is kind of when the, the sunset and it's going to be dark. So the sunset actually is noted at the very far edges here. And you've got the time of that as well in universal time. And the twilight is in universal time. So between here is when it's starting to get dark. Uh, the darkest part of the sky is going to be right in the middle of that. So what you'd really want is your object to peak right in the middle. So we can say that actually it's not particularly very observable on that evening. It's You can see it early on in the evening, but then it very quickly sets towards the horizon. So that particular night is not very good. So we want to find when the best time to observe the Orion Nebula from that location is going to be. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the original tool, get rid of that. And we go back up to the top and change the mode. So if we then do star track first, that will tell us how close it is to the moon. Now we know that the moon was actually, it was rising once Orion had already set. So actually they weren't interfering anyway. But if we just click there, we can check what was happening. So this time around, you can see the horizon. You've got your north, east, west, south. And this here, one, is our object, our Orion object, and it tells you the time and the location where it's going to be in the sky. And you can see it starts out kind of facing south and then it goes towards west as it starts to set and then it's gone. So in the early hours of the morning, it would be gone. And quite a number of hours later, then the moon starts to set kind of southeast, it's not set, it rises southeast and it then comes up here and they don't interfere with each other. So actually if, in regards to the moon and that object, that evening looks pretty good. So they're not interfering, they're not it's not around when you want to do your measurements. But we'll come back to this one once we've chose the best night to do our observation. So if we go back here, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose the star ob. So this is going to tell us the best date or best time in the year to actually well, when it's going to be the highest in the sky actually. So we're going to click retrieve again and we'll get a different plot. So what it's done here is your x-axis is now in date for the full 12 months of the year. So this is for 2023. Again, you can change the year if you like, but for now, 2023 is relevant. And you've got altitude again on the y-axis. So the top one is looking at the optimum observing time, the optimum altitude. And looking at this, so I've done this kind of around March. It's kind of not very good here, actually. But around December, so early to mid-December, it's actually reaching 
a peak altitude. And this is the air mass as well, which obviously is a function of how high it is in the sky, because you're looking through less air mass. So you actually, if you can look directly up, your air mass would be one. So actually this is very good. Our air mass was quite a lot larger when it's lowering down on the horizon. So we've got that. So I'm, I'm going to suggest we try and actually go for December. We'll change the, the month to December and see what our plots look like. But before we do that, we've also got the number of usable hours, really. So this black line here um, represents the total sunless hours of each day. Now, again, it's in the northern hemisphere, so you'd expect that during the summer months, you're going to get less hours during the night that are usable. So you've actually got more hours in the winter that where the night is darker. Again, that should make sense. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, that would obviously be a bit different. So, and then you've actually got the useful hours for the object. So you've got 10 useful hours to image this object in December. So that, again, is pointing towards probably December. I mean, probably November into January is going to be a good time, really, to observe this particular object from that location. So let's go back and choose December, because that's kind of in the middle, and see what our plot for the evening looks like. So December, we'll leave kind of 16 the same. And then we need to go back to star alt. And then we get a plot like this. Now that looks perfect, looks much, much better. So again, it's the same object. It's the Orion Nebula. This time around, it begins to rise once you get into astronomical twilight, so sunsets, then the object starts to rise. It's going to peak. It's going to be the highest point in the sky when the sky is the darkest. So perfect. And you've got lots and lots of usable time there to be taking measurements. And then it will start to set as the sky starts to get lighter. So absolutely perfect date to do that. We can also check with the other function as well. So if we go back and just check the last mode, and this should give us the best date to take a measurement to see if we're kind of right. So this just gives you the best time. So actually, it's told us that the 13th of December is the best time to observe here. So we weren't too far off. Now, if we go back and just check all of those things for the moon, so I'm going to change this to the 13th because it's told us the 13th is actually the best. And I'm going to go to Star Trek. And as you can see, the moon is here, so it's barely in the sky the whole evening, which is absolutely perfect. And even if it was in the sky, its illumination is only 2%. So it's actually not going to be very bright. It's not going to cause any problems for our observation. So that's another check that that date is going to be pretty good. And I'll, if I go back to the Star Trek again, so the Star Alt, just double check. And you can see the moon actually sets before or just after the sun sets. So absolutely perfect. There's nothing in the sky to ruin that. And if you've got nice clear skies, you should be able to get some nice images or do some nice scientific work on this object. So you can use this for any object, any location. You just might have to put in your own parameters. So you can go and choose what object you want to do. Make sure that you get the format correct here and you can put multiple objects on there as well. And also, if it's not on your list, if you want to do it at home or at an observatory that may isn't, maybe it isn't listed there, then you can just basically add it in on the longitude and latitude as well. You can also put the altitude in meters as well, and you'd write it in this format here. So it'd be longitude east, and it'd be latitude, and then your altitude, and then any offset in hours for universal time as well. And that's pretty much it. And it's a very important thing to do to plan your observations. It's not just about looking in the sky, see what's available. You can better plan to make sure that you've got the best observability of your object, even if it's, again, with your own telescope. But if you want to do this professionally and you, you know, go and use one of these large telescopes, you could have a really good idea on what science you want to do, what object you want to have a look at. It's going to be really interesting. It hasn't been looked at before, but you've got to demonstrate that the time and date you want to take your measurement is the best time available that you can do. There's no point doing it while the moon's up or when it's low on the horizon. You've got to demonstrate that it's the best time to take 
that measurement. And that is it. So thank you.